his routine in terms of showing the arbitrariness, I think, of, yes. of, of this, that, of being able to regulate what's called indecent speech, which right. could not be regulated it wasn't obscene, in other contests. It wasn't obscene. obscene so that was, it right. was a new category of speech that had been created, this indecent speech, which he was, he was proud That's of right. that. Yeah. Was, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask about that. How yeah. did he feel about the fact that his routine, and, and technically, I guess, in some ways, you could say it, it, it proved his point, but in another way, I mean, the free speech side lost. Yes, yes, that, they did. Yes, they did. And, and how did your father feel about that that decision? Uh, well, you know, he always called it an accident of history that he was involved in the case. He never felt like he. I mean, he wasn't. He, you know, he he didn't play the album. WBAI in New York played the album, and uh, it was in the middle of afternoon. The way my dis my dad describes the moment is a professional. Um, uh, a moralist was in a car with his 14-year-old son when they played the seven dirty words. Like this 14-year-old son had never heard these words. And of course, my dad's argument was there are two buttons on a radio, the off switch and the one that changes the station. If you don't like the speech, choose some different speech. Uh, but this gentleman decided to go and complain to the FCC. This thing ended up all the way in the Supreme Court. Um, my dad's biggest joy around this case uh, was that all nine justices had to listen <laughs> to the album, to the piece that was played, The Seven Dirty Words, and that the, and that the actual routine is in, is in the annals, is in the, is in the books of the Supreme Court. Right now, you can go to your local law library and look up the case, and his routine is typed out for everyone to see forever. Uh, he took great, great pride in that. Um, but he always did feel it was an accident of history. Um, so at 25, I went back to UCLA to get my, ba my bachelor's. I became a communications major. And one of the classes we were required to take was a First Amendment class, which was my favorite class. Loved it. Almost became a First Amendment lawyer. Like, was very close. Uh, then I thought, oh, law school. Ugh. But my professor, I'm in a classroom of about 100, 150, you know, maybe a little bigger than this, kind of a size classroom. And my professor, first day of class, was talking about the class and how he loved teaching it. His name's Jeff Cowan. He ran the Annenberg School at USC and knew Clinton, a big First Amendment guy. And he says, my favorite thing about teaching this class is that we'll study the Pacifica versus FCC case and I'll get to do George Carlin's seven dirty words for you. <laughs> Now this has become like a regular occurrence in my life where I'm like somewhere innocently minding my own business and my father intrudes on my life. And it was really a, a, one of those moments where I saw, so this was in um, 80, it was about 90, uh, and I really saw like, wow, my dad's really had this incredible impact on the culture at large. Um, and the fun part was was getting to go up to the professor afterwards and going, hi, uh, <laughs> just want to let you know. Uh, and of course, so the professor said to me, oh, could your dad come? Would he come <laughs> and do the seven dirty words for us? So I went to my dad and I said, so I'm taking this class. And I explained the whole thing to him. And I said, we're studying the Pacifica case. And you know, the professor would really love for you to come. And my dad was so so cute and interesting his reaction to that was, oh, no, I couldn't do that. I don't know anything about the case. I mean, it's just an accident of history that it was me and blah, 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 blah. And he's going on and on about it. And I just look at him and I'm like, Dad, I don't think they're asking you to know the law. I think they want you to come and be George Carlin and say the seven dirty words. But he was just so darling about it. And so, and I mean, that was really, uh, it really shows my father's kind of humility. My father had a lot of humility about his place in the culture and what he did. 